So the idea here is we're going to come up with one word here, and that's going to be our focus for the next screen. We're going to fill it up and move on from there. So we'll come over here. One word right there. What are we going to do? Yeah, no, just shout out. Togetherness. Togetherness. I hope I can spell that. Together on the hyphenate. There we go. So, taking the word togetherness, we're going to fill up the next ring. So, if we go right here. It's not raise your hand. It's just shout, shout out. out. And if I catch it and I hear it, I'll write it down. If I don't hear it, shout it out again. Go. Family. Family. Love. Love. Support. Support. Community. Friendship. Friendship. Interest. Say that again, please. Common interest. Common interest. One more. Fun. <laughs> okay, now we got that right. I hope that is not leaking through. <laughs> we might well write it up there that it is. So we're gonna take one word out of this ring. I'm gonna circle it. What word are we gonna use? I like community. Community. Now, using this word, that will be our focus for the next ring. Go. Um. Diversity. Diversity. Family. Family again. Is that what it was? That.
one more time. There's the song. You got it. I even hear some harmony going on right now. Now, it was real strong over here because I, I was standing over here and you see what happens. Not that what was going on over here was wrong or bad, but it, it just nailed right over here and people start gravitating toward what they hear and I could already hear the melody coming out. Can you try singing it without the chords? Yeah, Do it again. We have phrase number one already. And the kids will do exactly that. Now, it, there won't be harmony. Well, I guess the harmony will be the dissonance of the melody. But uh, that's exactly what the kids do. Yeah, well, not the first time. No. <laughs> Ready? Go. Silence. Yeah. Big eyes. <laughs> and then we do it again. It's usually silent again. But eventually, somebody will look at that or you something, and then, then they gravitate. And this is a great songwriting activity to do with new songwriters. Because if you're not as strong or you don't feel as confident, maybe the person next to you is. And you gravitate to them, and you're still part of the group. You're still part of the community. Yeah. So, uh, what's next? An well, overview of the project. We expected that part to go way longer. Because <laughs> it went way longer last year. But that was awesome. Um, oh, oh, we're going to come back to it. We're not um, So, I guess what we're doing presenting to you today is a, a project. Actually, first, I'm Sean Woods from Tampa. I'm Joey Willby from Tampa. Yeah. Yeah. Go Bulls. Uh, we've both been looking for our teachers. This will be our 10th year of this school year. So My eighth. Oh, you did the first one? No, I did the second one. Uh, I missed out. Well, we still love yeah. So, um, this, this we're sharing with you today is part of um, a project that we do in uh, Hillsborough County, which is a county Tampa is part of, and the surrounding cities. It was started, let's see, this year will be the 12th year, I think? Yes. It will be the 12th year of this Young Songwriters Symposium project. And the goal of the project is to get students to write songs. The entire songwriting process, uh, from coming up with a melody, lyrics, Choosing a genre for your songs, performing, recording studio, the whole process. It's about a 10, 10 to 12 week project. We meet after school with the students. Um, we have 10 teachers with two students each. We'd love to do more, but recording time is expensive. Even when the best recording studio in town gives you a great deal because he loves your product, and he loves your project. It's still, uh, you know, you have time constraints and money constraints. So we cap it at 20. What we hope to show you today is how we do that project, but also how you can adapt those activities for your classroom. Because we do it in our classroom. I know Dan back there, hi Dan, does it in his classroom. Um, in fact, a lot of people in the Tampa area have been a part of this project with it sometime. Anyway, I don't want to talk anymore. What did I miss? Nothing. Let's move on. Here's our uh, song start number one is what we call it for uh, the students. Their first assignment. So using the bullseye generator, students create the lyrics just like we did right there, all on their own. And they can take as much time as they need to, to fill each of those circles, usually a minute per ring. Then we record a scratch track, and that is one of those, hold your iPhone up to them, just sing. Whatever you get, you get, you're done. Probably about 10 seconds worth. And uh, 
we'll have a listening example here. I think we've got one right here. Waking up, feeling down, starting my day with the frowns, but I know that I'm powerful. Trying to show them who I am, they say, get up, be a man, and I know that I'm powerful. And that is the first session and roughly the second session. Uh, we meet bi-weekly. So the first week, or the first time that we meet, it's about two hours each session. Uh, we walk them through this, you know, we welcome them to the project. They get their song start number one. They get two weeks to work on that. And uh, teachers record their scratch tracks, bring them back in. We all listen to them. Uh, we don't criticize, but we, as a community, we support, we listen to it. We pick out things that we like. Hey, I like your rhythm here. I like your lyric choice there. Your melody is nice here. And you notice uh, there was no background accompaniment other than just, you know, Sean chunking on the guitar. You know, it's the kid coming up with the melody uh, without any input from us saying, hey, sing it like this. It's all student generated. I want to just put on the difference quickly because when the, when the project starts, um, anything in the classroom, I mean, I've been songwriting with, let's say, a third grade class, I like to start with the group song. So that you know those students who are a little less confident, they get to you know, see how other people are doing it, and then hopefully maybe internalize that and uh, help them create their own. So when those students go home after this first session, they're kind of on their own for two weeks to come up with some lyrics and figure out a melody without any accompaniment. Because a lot of our students, I mean, this, these are all fifth grade students that are a part of this. A lot of them have some skills on modern band instrumentation, you know, guitar and keyboards. But putting that together with the songwriting, it's not quite there yet for many students. So starting with just the melody and lyrics is awesome. It's something they already have. Yeah, and I found, you might speak to this too, a group of no more than three. I found a group of four, someone's always left out. You know, so a group, two or three people in each group seems to work well for my kids at school. I mean, certainly a group of seven or eight, that's just, you're not going to get much done there, I don't think. So you do about the same size? Yeah. yeah I like two. I, if, if we're working in groups in class, I like two. One or two. Because some students, they, I don't even know what I'm going to do. I don't want to compromise with you. I have my own song, good for you, go do that. And then the other students, they like that. Be able to work with somebody and bounce ideas off of them. Just have that support. Maybe they're not as confident a guitar player while singing. So maybe one person sings and one person plays guitar. I like to um, one or two, and then of course whole group, whole class, which is you know, yeah, what we are. All right. So some of you have some colored squares on your seat. There's some up front. It's first and second rows. If you don't have any, feel free to grab them. Have one extra, anybody need it? Yep. Kids love this one too. All right, so just how we uh, started with the last uh, lyric and idea generating activity, you're going to start with one word, but this one now is rather than working together and shouting out, now we're working individually. So I want you to come up with one word, just like we did to start, and I want you to write that on top of the first page. That's it, one word, and I'll give you 20 seconds to, to come up with your word and write it down. If you don't have four squares, if you just take a piece of paper, you can divide it into four squares there and do the same thing. Exactly one minute of my timer. 
just found it on the floor. To think about that word that you wrote down, and whatever comes to mind, I want you to just write it down on that first sheet. Right underneath the word, it can be single words, it could be phrases, complete sentences, whatever comes to mind. You got one minute, so think fast. Time is over. So, you've got your first page, hopefully you've got some things written on it. I want you to, just like we did with the bullseye here, I want you to take a word or a phrase that you wrote down. I want you to transfer that word to the second page. And you're going to do the exact same thing you do with the first page. Now, what I, what I like to tell my students is, forget that first page. That first page is done. You've got a brand new page. Come up with some new ideas, it doesn't matter if it has anything to do with page one. Time is up. So let's take a look at that second page, those words you wrote, pick another one, transfer it to the next page. So let's, it gets shorter, doesn't it? It feels like it gets shorter. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so you got one more page. Let's transfer something from the third page, one word, up to the fourth page. And let's fill up that page. Ready? Begin.
that's it. It's, yeah. You heard my song, right? Um, but you, to what you were saying, that uh, it feels like it's getting shorter. Um, did anybody else feel that way as you got to the third and fourth page that, like, what is it? I don't want time to write. Um, why do you think that is? You have more ideas. Yeah. Like, I did a flow of music. Well, for me. Well, sure. So I had more of like, Yeah, we, we find that by that third and fourth page, um, even if, even if the, the first page was you know, something trivial or silly, by that third and fourth page, uh, it's becoming very thoughtful. You know, and a lot of thought is going into it. This is such a, a great activity to do with kids because uh, it kind of forces them into that without without them even realizing it. Really thinking about what's meaningful to them, putting it down on the page. Yes. When you're doing this exercise with your students, and you know that you have a student who has a hard time writing or has a hard time putting their thoughts onto paper, how do you modify? As the activity is happening, uh, and I can think of a few specific examples from last school year, uh, where a student just sits, and, and not you know, defiant, I'm not going to do it, but they're just sitting and they don't know what to write. I let the activity go on because it takes five minutes, and then after that I'll go and help that student. You know, like, what do you want to write a song about? What do you like? You know, um, play football. All right, let's start with that. Why do you like football? And it just prompt them. And this, again, this is an activity to get ideas on the page because staring at that blank page is, is the hardest thing for a song, right? What am I going to do? I can do anything. Yeah, that's where the song starts, right there. Um, and to answer the question, we have some students at my school that in their IEP, um, they have that accommodation where they speak and someone else writes. And I've even done that with a student or two where you know, I had to sit with them and say, okay, you. Talk me through what you would like for me to write. You do that during the minute, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm not really sure where you're, exactly where you're going with this, but um, I was going to suggest that they just draw pictures. Absolutely. We How, have so many of these generators that we do. We chose two for today because we have 90 minutes. One of them is draw a picture of a member. You know, draw that something that's happened to you, so it's something meaningful, but it's just in pictures, and, and we, we stress, you know. Add the details. You know, you're sitting in your living room. Well, what's happening outside the window? What's it was snowing in Tampa. That's my earliest memory. <laughs> January 18th. So, absolutely, yeah. Um, and um, at uh, your songwriting session earlier, you had a great one where you did the film, um, putting a, uh, taking the audio out and just watching basically a silent four or five minute short film and then starting with that. And that was a lot of fun which I will be stealing for the group song in our project this year. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, so many different ways. They're all great. So basically the idea with this is that you get the ideas on the page, and then we turn them into sentences or lyrics, and just like we did with our group song. Uh, one question to think about. How will the word choices you use, or your students use, be different between the bullseye and the four square lyric generator, if any difference at all. Someone else. So okay. one big difference is the bullseye is everybody writing coming together and this is you narrowing Very personal. your own thoughts. That personal sense. So do you provide like more progression for the song or do they um more depends. depends. When, we're, when we do the group song, absolutely. Um, with this for the project. They take it home, they create a melody without it. Because, um, I mean, 
that I think I said that um, not all students are proficient at you know, 10 and 11 years old to sing and play those guitar changes in the key that's appropriate for their singing voice. So once they've come up with a melody, then that's where we come to. We'll do some of that uh, chord progression addition to the song uh, in a few minutes. Um, when you're doing this, do you, how much modeling do you do? Because like you modeling in the back of the this is doing about two edge short. I, at one point, I would model the whole thing. Okay. And then I realized that was a really bad idea. You're sitting quietly for five minutes, or should be. And then they start yelling out, like the bullseye. I'm like, no, 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 this isn't work. this is mine. So now what I do is I give the directions, and I do it on the board at the same time. I do my own personal thing. So people kind of see how I'm doing it. But you know, you've got students, some of them, they don't need this. They're going to jump right into the songwriting. But some will need it. They like to have that. And so they can look at me and say, oh, I see what he's doing. Great. And the ones who don't, they will ignore me the whole time. Yeah, right? And uh, I don't care. I'm never going to look at this page. This is for the students' eyes only. I want to see their final product or you know, the progression of their product. But this right now, I don't need to see it. I think your writing teacher will like, like you for doing this as well. You know, some cross-curricular things going on here. All right, let's look at the next slide. Our song start number two, which would be our second session. Uh, after they've had that two weeks to start their first song, we had them start a second song. Uh, again, individual lyric generator with four squares. Uh, they're going to create lyrics and melody. Uh, you guys are going to do that in just a second for our Little Kids Rock participants. And uh, using one of your generators, you're going to create a short phrase with a melody. So you're going to take your four squares and spend some time with it. In all honesty, it's no different than the first assignment. But it's, in a lot of cases, it's the student's second try. So they've had a little experience, and they know what was difficult for them. So usually the second song start comes out a little more true to what they want and what they envision their song to be. And a lot of times they're happier with that and we'll talk more about selection process. Alright, so you know what you're doing? Take your words from your four square generator, create phrase number one. Create your lyrics, find a melody, come around and listen. Yeah, let's take about six minutes. Learn some lyrics, create a melody, and I would challenge you to not use a guitar or a piano. Just come up with a melody, like the fourth grader. Absolutely. Yeah, feel free to use the space. Explore the space. Explore the space. Does anybody need a cowbell for that? Yes. We will get to the editing process uh, when it's appropriate for the kids.
Yes. I think they're all used up. Um, but the uh, the alternative, you just take a page, cut it into quarters, works just as well. Because that's what we did with the four pages. <laughs> Two-minute warning. You don't have to have a whole song ready. Just, just a couple of verses. Maybe one verse. So now we Take about 30 more seconds and finish up. Close your booklet. You're not allowed to go back to the next segment. All right, so um, I heard some, uh, heard some singing, some uh, thoughtful meditation. Do you think anybody would like to share? Right now, I'm putting you on the spot. John? So we have, we have some instruments around the room. I've got some keyboards over here. Um, some of you have guitars. Uh, 
the next step in, in our process as the teacher in this, when a student comes with this melody, what, uh, what chord progressions go, what music do we want to add to accompany that melody? So let's figure out what chords match with uh, John's melody. You got a guitar, grab it, can we grab a What do you buy, like a keyboard? Go for that. Um, I'm gonna, you're gonna have to sing the punch. Yeah, Maybe up in the microphone. Come on up, do you mind? Yeah. Cause I can record it and do that. Here's the Any other keyboard? Yeah. Got one more for you. Should I just? Do you see what I see? Is it really been there? Or am I going crazy? Thank you. 
was awesome. Yeah. And um, will that happen for students? Mm -hmm. It will. Yeah. With this level, uh, maybe it will. I mean, I teach elementary, so it's not going to happen with my class. But, but yeah, um, say how um, part of the, it's like the last piece of your, your phrase was um, it, it changed a little bit every once in a while. And then once the band was there, just the chords were there, it solidified where it needed to go. And you know, I always hear that, but you're, you're, the kid didn't create this, but yeah, they did. I mean, that's underlying, that's there. It's with the melody already, it's inherent to it. We want it there. Um, and I love the, the, um, the choice that's there. We could have started with F. We could start with D minor and give that choice to the student. Like, this will work and this will work. What do you want? And, uh, and if you didn't like the style, well, it's your song. Take it. And we'll get to that as well in a few moments. Cool. So let's, uh, let's do one more like that. You've got your instruments. I have a student example here. Let's, uh, let's listen. Waking up, feeling down, starting my day with the frown, but I know that I'm powerful. Trying to show them who I am, they say, get up, be a man, and I know that I'm powerful. Or disagree, and you know, 
but we're pointing them in, in a direction that has been successful for other musicians and other songwriters. Um, it's the teacher's job as producer. Let's move on. We have another song here. Oh, we have another one, but we spent some good time with John, so I don't think yeah. we, we can listen Let's to Let's just it. listen once and here it is without the accompaniment. This is a group song by my whole class. With the accompaniment. Uh, listen, this was a group song that we did. We started with the chords. Again, I took it out so we could do this activity, but turns out we didn't need to. Let's just hear it. Another thing, yeah. another thing we spend time on is analyzing lyrics of pop songs, trying to get a deeper meaning of what's going on. And we use uh, this song right here, Adele Set Fire to the Rain, as is she really setting fire to the rain? Uh, so let's listen to this song right here. We've got the lyrics, we'll just listen right up to the chorus, and we'll have a discussion on getting deeper into those lyrics. So um, if you look right here, anything that you noticed that jumps out at you about how she created her lyrics or the order of her words? 
Yes. Definitely a, a story that reading it makes it easier to like hear or go from one thing to the next. So it's like a series of events. Okay. Thought out in the order that she wanted, yeah? A lot of body parts. A lot of body parts. <laughs> Head and shoulders, knees and toes. Well, take the first sentence. I mean, how would we ever talk like that? Hey, I let it fall, my heart. You know, we're not Yoda. We would say, I let my heart fall. But with changing that, doesn't it make it more interesting when she says, I let it fall, my heart? Yeah, it makes you suspense. Yes. More poetic. What grade are you doing this with the song? Uh, this would be fifth grade. Uh, we use this as part of our uh, project. Not first grade. Do you analyze songs in first grade? In first grade, no. I don't, personally. But third grade, I, I wouldn't use this right here with third grade. Um, not something this deep. My, my wife um, has to, she's used to teach very well. She had to teach every day a reading class, like a full out reading. School was separated, but she had the, the, uh, like the higher kids in fifth grade. They didn't really need the extra work, but they had to go somewhere. So this is what they did. They are, the, the kids, we've seen that the kids are completely, in, in fifth grade, completely capable of understanding that. And pulling deeper meanings out of it, it's when you ask them to do it their own. Because they don't do creative writing anymore. No. This is not where, no, no. not the table. They don't, they know how to analyze someone else's work, what it means. If you ask them to do it, that's why we get taco songs. Just how tasty tacos are, which is not untrue. But you know, getting to do something more meaningful, it, it, it start. It can start here, at least as an teacher. Because we use yeah. this as a jumping off point. Yeah. Take the third stanza and sing it in your head. See what you come up with. Does anything jump out there at you? <laughs> Repetition. Never knew, never knew, never true, never true. Always win, always win. I mean, that's a pretty strong punch at the end of that, that line right there. I'm sorry? Syncopation. And then her use right here, but I set fire to the rain. What do you think that means? I got you. What are her possibilities when um, she's crying over his picture while she, before she throws him on the fire? Okay. Could be a literal or fire. The, or, the, or, the, the, or her tears. Tears. Rain. Yeah, would the rain maybe be her tears? And she's going to set fire. She's going to get rid of those tears. Yes. Or, I mean, this is a little bit scary, but it's like, it's like a revenge thing, like an emotional revenge. Like, I'm going like, to burn your memory. Oh, burn your memory. As much as I cry about you, I'm also burning you up. And when I said, I said well, I burn while I cry, it's what, I'm not thinking that she's burning, but that she's getting rid of you. Know. Yeah, this gets our fifth graders thinking how they could creatively write something interesting and, and instead of, I let my heart fall. And, yeah. All right, let's move on. Um, I can't say something and it was. Oh, the nice thing about this is that all these ideas are correct, right? Because you, you take away from art something personal, and every person takes something different away from it. And, and we like to stress that. that Whatever your interpretation is, good for you. It's correct. It also gives them, uh, doing a song like this gives them permission to express some of the yeah. dark, deep thoughts that they've been experiencing. You will get some too. Mm -hmm. It'll scare you sometimes. And good for them. Giving them an outlet to, to express that and get it out of them. Even as early as fourth and fifth grade, then 
And at our school, kids are required to write poems. I mean, it's part of, they do that, I guess, this creative writing. And I tell them, hey, bring your poem in. Put a chord progression to it. Sing your poem to your teacher. You know, so I use that. I mean, it's kind of an already done project there. All right, so they have assignment number three. We asked them to choose one of their song starts. They've got two they're working on. Choose one and continue. So if they've got phrase one, uh, that may or may not be the verse. It could be the chorus. So we asked them to continue that process. Yeah, you've got to pick one of those songs you've come up with. And like I said earlier, a lot of times with that second song start, it's become more personal. All right, so let's use our group song. Uh, this is my favorite part of the, the project here. Uh, and we're going to change the style of the, or the genre. So real quick, just shout out your favorite genre. Punk. Oh, funk. I said punk. Funk. Anything else? Gospel. We've had those songs too. Hard rock. Or just shout out a style or genre that you know. Country. We've had those. Soul. Folk. Jazz. We haven't had any jazz, I don't think. Psychedelic. We might have so, had one of those. <laughs> when we started the group song, uh, let's, I know it's been a while. Let's see if you remember the, the melody for that. Here are the lyrics. I'll give you the chorus one. So we... Together with family, living in unity, people connected through love and hope. Here's the chord progression. We're four beats on each chord. How about we play it uh, just like it sounded? Let's go through it one more time. Ready? One, two.
We have to have a face melting guitar solo somewhere. You know? yeah. So, um, well, after they make. Can we go back real fast oh, yeah. to the one before that? Just quickly on oh, the yeah. parts of the song talking about form. We, we touch on that on the first session, but at this point, when they're really fleshing out their songs, we, we talk about does your song need a bridge? Does it need a solo? A lot of the songs come to us, we're looking for a complete pop song. And a lot of them come in there a minute and 40 seconds long. Okay, well that's great. We can flush that out to three, three and a half minutes when we repeat this section, put a solo, maybe an interlude in here. So we, we discuss those things with the students and you know, give them examples from you know songs that they've heard. Here's here's what Taylor Swift's doing right here. I don't know why she came to mind. <laughs> She's very songwriter. There you go. Simple chords. Always, yeah. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Yeah. And then Kayla. In, in our county, our curriculum kind of dictates some things for us. And by fifth grade, our fifth graders are very comfortable identifying that in a song. If you put on a, a familiar song, they know where the introduction is, obviously. But they know what the bridge is. They know what the, the chorus or refrain is. So that's easy uh, for us there. It's been a lot easier since we've been doing Wilkins Rocksmith yes. and the modern band. We're playing along with, uh, I, I did that last, uh, the spring jam. I did Mercy at the end of the school year. Who is that, Sean? Yeah. Maybe. Anyway, um, and I could just yell, verse, and then you have to go back to the verse, of chorus. And for assignment number four, that is to complete your song and make choices on your genre and form. It's all their choice, whatever they, they want. And uh, moving on from there, we have to start getting into final choices. By this time, their melody is set. They should be singing it the same way every single time. We have an informal rehearsal with the band, kind of like what you've seen up here. You know, that just kind of gets us in the idea of what's going to happen. And I, I've, some people say, hey, can you play trombone on mine? You know, I really encourage that. Uh, some people are like, no, I don't want that. I want piano. I don't want guitar. So they start telling us what they want. What One of the things we find that, that helps if your student is improvising your melody too often, and it changes every time you hear it, is to, you know, that one that is fairly close to what they think is their, their goal for that melody, record it yourself. Sing their melody for them. Or have them sing it and play along with the melody on piano. 
so they can reinforce that. Because, you know, they sing along with songs on the radio, and they're comfortable with that, but they're the lead singer now, and they have to be the one who embodies that song. And that's a very helpful way to help solidify it. Yeah, assignment five, practice. Yes? Uh, as far as lesson plans, how do you develop your craftsman lesson plan along with I guess each, for me, each uh, day that I'm going to do this, there's a standard that our uh, state provides. If it is creating a song, uh, this meets that. Whether it's looking at um, the parts of the song, we have a standard for that in the analyzing a song uh, standard in our Florida Next Generation Sunshine State standards. Uh, when, so, I do, when I do songwriting in the class, I usually block out three hours of time for a song, which for me and for us in our, our district, translates to three weeks, because we see them 30 minutes twice a week. And so I carve out three hours of time, and in that first 30 minutes, this is what needs to be done. If you have completed this part, great job. Yeah. And just to have those goals, at the end of each class, here's what you should have accomplished. And if you don't, you're going to have to work a little faster next time. You're going to get to that point. Yeah, and I set mine up as a unit. Instead of doing, here's today's individual 30-minute lesson plan, I say, songwriting. Here's the unit and everything that I want to cover. And if it takes me three weeks, it may take me four weeks. So I don't really have to put a timeline on that unit plan. It's here's what my goal is for this plan. I'm going to take as much time as needed. And it's usually three weeks. That translates to six classes for us, six 30-minute sessions. And we'll talk later um, when we're wrapping up about when we do this in class, how do we deal with assessment with this type of thing. So that will come later. Any questions on, on this so far? Yes. That's a great idea. We, we didn't mention this earlier, but session number one, each kid gets what we call a book book, which is just a composition book, and we encourage them to write their ideas down in there as well. Usually, in my experience, you know, we do this, this project wraps up before Thanksgiving, and my students are still bringing it in May, the same book, just coming up with a new yeah. song. So, if you like to hold on to it, they have it. All right, so. Final edits and rehearsal. After their song's completed, they've got everything that they need in terms of the instrumentation. We know what's going on. We take a field trip to a recording studio. And they get to about four minutes is what we do each song in, roughly. So it's boom, boom, boom. 20 songs in three and a half hours. And uh, one of the, you know, we have teachers play the game. Because it's a songwriting project. It's not a perform a band project. That's something different. I'm not sure we both do that as well. But this is specifically songwriting. So we have the kids focus on that. Because how overwhelming is that for us to walk into a recording studio if you're not a seasoned vocalist and stand in front of that mic in an isolation booth looking at five or six professional musicians? That would be, that would be it's a intimidating for me. I can sit behind the drum set and be fine. So, you know, imagine an 11 -year -old. That's why we have the teachers be their band. Uh, you mentioned fifth grade for the text, you mentioned third grade for the singing. Uh, like how often do you do this kind of unit or this project, whether it's by how many times a year or how many grade levels do you do it at a time? I usually I usually do one grade level at a time for my own sanity. Because I don't want to songwrite for you know three hours a day or play chord person. So I'll do fifth grade, I'll do fourth grade, I'll do third grade. Uh, second grade we'll we'll do some mainly lyric writing. We'll do uh, we we'll use Manish Boy.
improvise. Thank you for getting the word. They improvise the melody, they improvise their lyrics, I should say, because the melodies are in there. And we write our own blues songs. So it's mainly the lyric writing with, with the seventh graders about, you know, how sad it is that they didn't get any candy. Actually, it was that they dropped their iPhone and broke it. That was one of them. One thing that I do with first grade is, uh, we, again, we have a standard in Florida about uh, bringing a story or poem to life. So with my first graders, uh, I've got a pretty good little lesson plan about the book Where the Wild Things Are. And we make a live production of that. And inside of there, um, there's one little section that I have the students create a melody to words that are already there. Um, so they're not having, I mean, these are first graders, you know. But that goes along with what you were saying about starting earlier in the year with this. Well, starting in first grade. There are small activities you can do that build up to this. Uh, I use the uh, the rap talk activity, which is supposed to be like a freestyle thing where you talk about your day or what you're gonna do this weekend. But you do it in rhythm. Well, I have the kids then take out you know a, a template that I give them and come up with phrases and let's try to make that last word rhyme this time. Just to have that experience. You know? So there's so many different things we can do you know, throughout. Year and throughout all grade levels that can lead up to this. And that's all our jams are all yeah. there. And throughout the whole process here, it's important right here that the students know the expectations. You have to communicate that to them. What do you expect them to be doing, to be able to do? Um, I mean, to just throw this at them, say, write a song, you know, you're going to get a blank stare back at you. But if you systematically go through it a little bit at a time with this process, you'll be amazed at what your kids will give you. And I think it's important to add to that to them that this is not how you write a song. This is the way that you can write a song. This, this process has worked for other songwriters in the past. Maybe it'll work for you, maybe not. That's why we do it a bunch of different ways. We find out what works for you. And number six, practice some more. Well, let's look at that assessment rubric. So we've got two of them. This is the one that I like to use, and it's all based on, uh, I guess I should say that the project itself, there's no assessment. This is, this is a project just to do it and be a part of this. But in class, you know, there's, there's an assessment inside of it. So uh, I do it based on a uh, development of the song. So if the student shares with me, and I'm playing the chords for them, let's say, you know, I'm, I'm playing through my chord progression, and they read me their lyrics, well, that's, that's at that first level. They have their lyrics. And what I'll do is I'll challenge them to take it to that next step. Not make it better, but take it to the next step and just add some rhythm. And so maybe I'll give an example of me reading their lyrics just with a steady beat behind my voice. Maybe I'll just read their lyrics with quarter notes and eight notes. But that's the next step in development. And again, then the third level would be they added phrases to it. Because a lot of times I would just get, I'll get rhythm, I'll hear rhythm, I'll just sit that reverb. <laughs> you like that? That's fine. We're almost done. Um, but there'll be no break. It'll just be words, 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 words. Well, let's put some space in there. Let's talk about phrasing, how we can create musical phrases by putting space in there. How many people went to my space session? Space, right? Uh, and then finally, down here, we've got melody. I rarely have an instance where it goes out of this order. Every once in a while, I'll have a student who has lyrics and phrases, but no rhythm. So they'll have a chunk of words, they'll take a break, and then another chunk of words, but they're still just speaking. Maybe three times that's happened to me. And in that particular instance, we'll address it and say, listen, you're doing something very unique. Here's, here's what you can do to, to take your simple step. If they come to me and they have that fourth step already, great job. Then uh, write more of your song. Give me a chorus, give me a bridge, write a second verse. Take it to the next step. It's all about development. I just want to see them take it to the next step to push that comfort zone just a little bit. In terms of assessment, uh, I, I see you have good. In terms, I'll, I'll forget this if I don't say it now. In terms of assessment, I mean, I guess everybody's county is different, but for ours, this four doesn't mean A and one means an N. If that student starts at a one and through the process in Sean's class gets to a two, that's an A. That's an A. 
So the judgment or the assessment is not, you've got to get here. We want to see progress, evidence of learning. Going from that one to a two, maybe there wouldn't be a zero on here, but what if a kid can't even come up with lyrics? What if they started there and they said, oh, Mr. Motes, I've, I've got a couple words. That's a progression of learning that we want to see. And that, that's what our county does anyway. I like to start with the lyrics because the student doesn't have lyrics. And we talked about this earlier. I will work with that student. What do you like? You like football. I'm using this because this is an example in my head of Kyle in fourth grade. Nothing on this page. But he would always come up with what I want to do. And it was always football. Let's write a song about football. Right? So they have something. I, we got, we, even if it's one line, what is the fragment sentence? Football. Got something. The same idea in a different rubric form. If you have your criteria up here, lyrics, rhythm, phrases, melody, what if they can come to you and they only have one of the criteria? Maybe they only have the melody. I guess technically if they have the melody, they may have some rhythm in there. So you could use uh, this form like a one, level one would be, I've got one of these things. I don't know which one it is, but I've got it. Moving on to the next level, progressing there, using any of those two, then three, obviously, and four. So it's the same idea, just in a different thing. I see your hand. He had a question real quick, and I'll get you. Well, I was just asking about the rhythm as far as, like, so I teach elementary, too. So if they write down their lyrics, and then, like you said, you're playing the, the backing beat or whatever to it. Yeah, I like it. I have a looper pedal. Okay. And I'll play my guitar here, and I'll set it down, and I'll let it play for the next 30 minutes of class. And we'll yeah, and you just try to get them to fit it within, like, measure like four beats eight beats so that would usually be their, yeah. that would be their rhythm i guess and fitting it into yeah more or less we have, we have a very strong focus on rhythm okay. in, our, in our county mm -hmm. and um they they understand what they're going for they understand the idea of rhythm and how to make it okay. fit within the steady beat and you know if they have a lot of words well you're going to have to you're going to have to yeah. do some fast rhythms fit it in or either that or, or do some editing yeah. <laughs> yes ma'am Yes, every rubric that we use for assessment, we go over with the kids because this is what we expect of them as part of that expectation. If they were like, well, last week I only got one, I know I need four. What is it going to take me to get Well, in my particular class, I don't tell them they need four. Sure, well, this, this is the goal, but my class and the rapport that I have with them, I want them to go from this to this, this to this, this to this to this. Some of them will never get there. Okay. And that's okay. That doesn't mean they don't get an A. What about, what about a student who decides they're not going to do a melody because they wrote a rap song? Yeah. Then they're going to stay and maybe they came up and they had beautiful phrases, rhythm, and lyrics, but no melody. And they didn't want melody. That's the highest they can get then, but... They're going to stay at a three and I'm going to say, hey, you got it. write right. more of that song. I want to hear yeah, so I mean, this isn't this doesn't determine A, or B, or C. If they like, like Sean said, that's a great point. If they do a rap song, this is as high on the rubric they can get. Is that bad? No, the rap did not include melody. That's all that means, you know. And I'll tell them, and I'll make a point to say to the class, that's where that needs to be. You're fine. That's great. But a, a rap song does include. So sure, sure. We hope it includes inflection. And you know, I, I get kids who are very, very comfortable expressing themselves in that way and adding, you know, bringing their voice out with a shout or something in their mm -hmm. song. And that's fantastic. And, you know, it's, it's worth applauding and pointing out that is a fantastic musical piece. It might be rhythmic in nature, but I'm a drummer, so it's still. Um, yeah, I mean, that inflection really isn't inflection melody. I mean, your, your voice goes higher a little bit. Doesn't melody go higher? I mean, so we can technically call that inflection a melody. So, But that, that's a good point to address, though, um, with that. Um, this isn't the ABC. This is where we want them to be. And it's more of a, a measure for them personally to see this is what I'm doing. This is what I have created. I know my numbers. <laughs> you know what order they go. Yes, ma'am. We don't have uh, performance as part of that rubric. Nope. 
we do perform, but you know, it's not part, part of it. And their performance is for us in class. When we're talking class, their performance is for me, just sharing with me. Um, because that's something different. I would make an entirely different rubric, rubric for how you perform. Yeah, I guess you could get posture, because one of our standards is singing with correct posture, holding your guitar with correct posture, playing with correct technique. If we wanted to get technical into that, we could. Because there's a lot of students who don't want to share with their class. But they don't have a problem sharing with me. I don't want to, I'm not going to give them any kind of grade or assessment on that when the, the assignment was writing something. Not necessarily performing yourself. Yeah, not all, the project, yeah. you got to perform. Not all songwriters perform their songs. Yes? Yes, I haven't really I, used that with this. Um, I, I will have them assess themselves. And if they're in a pair. Yeah, in a group. Gonna... Yeah, I don't call people up to the front and say, okay, everybody. You know. Now, I guess part of the symposium, when we're all listening, I don't necessarily, I wouldn't call that assessment as more of just listening and, and pointing out what we liked about it. Like John's song, he used a lot of space in his phrases. And we talk about space being good. Um, one more, and then we're going to wrap up. Do you ever have like a songwriting competition with the uh, students? I, I, I don't. never use that word. Exhibition. Or uh, something like that. That uh, puts everybody on display. It looks like an art exhibit. You know, everybody's work that wants to be a part of it on display. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I never use the competition because I hate American Idol. Right? I, you don't sing at this level, so you're not, you shouldn't sing. I mean, that's what it says, right? That's what inherently that show is telling us. That if you're not the best, don't do it. It's garbage. I sing all the time, and I don't have a good voice, but I'm going to do it, and I don't care. Um, for years, this project you know, in Hillsborough County has been a great success. And as I'm listening to and listening about kids performing and reflecting on the, the order of our operation in the project, the first time that we play scratch tracks for each other, the kids bury their faces and like are mortified that people are going to hear them like sing, and they secretly love it. But, you know, they're putting on this act, I think, even. Some of them are really embarrassed. Um, we do it anyway. And the next time, they're embarrassed a little less. And then by the third time that we're sharing the product, it's, it's almost nothing to share with a small group. And then when they perform on stage, they're closer. They end up singing so each other's songs. I can't even imagine. I, I mean, the shutdown that would happen if we didn't do that scratch track sharing, you know? We build them up over time to get to that stage level. Um, so that, I think that's a critical piece. Yeah. And there was, there was a time years and years and years ago when a songwriter or two would do the songwriting and reassign the singing role to another. They, would, they didn't want to perform it. As the project, you know, the Young Songwriters Project, we're like, okay, all right, songwriter, you wrote the song, Let's, we'll have somebody else sing it. But, you know, now we don't do that. We, we kind of push them. Okay, <laughs> we got about three minutes left. Um, yeah, real fast. What we'll do is, of course, just like all the other sessions, this is available to you. Yeah. Uh, we will add our email addresses at the bottom of this slide. Because if you want to, start a project like this in your city, we encourage you to, and we will be glad to help you with any questions. Um, just quickly, I mean, the budget usually runs us about 1500 for the entire project. We get a good deal on our recording studio. He gives us four hours of studio time, plus he mixes everything for $600. <laughs> and then we perform at uh, the University of South Florida, and that's like 
four hundred dollars for give us that a facility. So then we have, you know, we go on a field trip, so we buy lunches, that kind of thing. <clears throat> if you have that kind of resource or you can get in contact with the the recording studio, that's where you're gonna save your money if somebody's willing to work with you, just like we're it, lucky enough to have. In the week prior to the start, we do get a teacher training day. So all the teachers involved um, come to, well, we'll go to Sean's school and do the training, and our supervisor provides a full day substitute teacher for them. That's not part of that $1,500 budget. So that's 19, 20 teachers, no, I'm sorry, 10 teachers um, worth of pay to the supervisor budget. And we actually take this right here and we expand the, well, Expand the training into about a six hour. Well, we, we, we complete our group songs. We complete our individual songs. Because a lot of teachers come in and they want to be a part of it because the final product that they've seen over the years is so phenomenal. I want to do that. But they've never written a song before. So the, you know, that training day is their opportunity to write a couple of songs for the first time. Yeah. Any questions? Like a collaboration I, there. I think, I think the songwriting, you know, you may have a vocalist that doesn't want to write a song. They just want to sing the songs, you know? I think targeting who the songwriters are, who those people are that want to deal with that. And, and then, you know, from there, oh, we need a drummer for this song. So, you know, I would tackle it that way because. We've had experiences in the past where we, um, and by the way, we're out of time, so if you want to do your email, you got to go, go, uh, but I'll keep talking. We've had uh, experiences in the past where you know, students will be phenomenal singers, and we choose them for the project because of that, and Tampa, Florida. they find something oh, Sean really and Joey's, and they finally don't like it. They want to just sing the song, so that's, that's a good thing to target first. The little girl that we heard that had that A, D, A, E chord progression, she's a fourth grader. I already targeted her for this fall. It's just from that small because she was not afraid to come up and share her song with me. She stayed on pitch more or less. And she had, she wrote a good phrase and came out with me like that. She, she's into this. She's, she's going to really be doing this. I think it's targeting those songwriters to step one. But like I said, 